How's it going guys? Nate here with Responsible Arm Korean here with another tabletop review. Today we're going to be talking about the Romeo 7S from Sig Sauer. Now Sig Sauer has been making electro optics for a while. Uh, with some of their more well-known offerings being the Romeo 5, which is a really pretty solid budget AR optic. Uh, the Romeo 7 was their more robust option uh, with a 30 millimeter tube, um, and they have recently come out with a compact version that they are calling the Romeo 7S. So we're going to do an unboxing, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's in the box. Okay, so we've got our manual and a lens cloth. Your silicon packet, the optic, which is wrapped in plastic. Okay. You've got your adjustment tool. Looks like that's also going to be used to change the mount. Screws for the different height mount and battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into this tabletop. So if you're familiar with Sig Sauer, their optics tend to have a set of features that are commonplace amongst all of their optics, one of them being uh, what they call MOTAC. MOTAC is Motion Activated Illumination System, so the optic powers up when it senses motion and powers down after it's been sitting for a while. Um, it has an M1913 uh, cross slot mount with a very hefty bolt. Uh, the machining looks really good. It does come with clear lens caps. You have a battery compartment on the right side of the optic. This takes AAA batteries, so a common battery, which is nice. Um, supposedly runs at 50,000 hours on a single AAA battery, and that life can be extended based on MOTAC. Uh, it has protected adjustment turrets for your windage and elevation. Uh, this has a two MOA red dot. This is also IPX7 rated for water immersion up to one meter, so it is water resistant. There are nine brightness settings, including two night vision settings. So these first two settings would be night vision and the rest are daylight. Let's go ahead and install the battery and uh, take a look at it. Okay, I've got the battery installed. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so there's your dot. It's not gonna look as crisp on camera because I can't get it to focus properly on the dot, but it is a two MOA dot. It is fairly crisp. Um, now, I will say this just right off the bat, I have astigmatism and the dot is starbursting some for me. Um, I don't know how it will be for you guys, uh, but if you have astigmatism, it might be something to be aware of um, if you're considering this optic. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it up. There's something else I want to see. You can kind of see around the edges, see how it looks like it might be haloing a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn the brightness up and see if that gets better or worse. It gets much worse. So there is significant haloing happening, which is uh, basically the effect where the LED is reflecting off of the inside of the optic, creating this kind of red halo you can see there in the front. And it's pretty significant. Um, so already, guys, that is a pretty big turnoff for me when it comes to optics. It's a really distracting thing to have happen. Now, I will tell you, like, if you're not aware of it, if you do get the halo effect, if you're running in full sunlight, like where you have a very bright front light, that, that halo effect won't be noticeable. Um, but, for example, if you're, let's say, inside of a building and you're aiming out, or you're in the shade and you're aiming into sunlight, it will... The halo won't be there, but if you turn into a darker environment or turn to darker lighting, it will then suddenly be um, very noticeable. So um, that is a little bit of a problem for me, but let's go ahead and keep looking at the rest of the optic. So the dial here for um, adjusting the dot or yeah, dot brightness is very tactile. You can hear the clicks, but the, the clicks are are pronounced so um, it's not mushy or anything like that very tactile uh, I like the feel it's got texturing so you don't slip um, the optic body seems to be machined really well I don't see any machine marks you do have that little ridge there that's not uncommon there's your 
etching into the side of the Sig Sauer logo. We also have the nice laser etched Romeo 7S on the battery compartment. So this does come with different height mounts. So I did look this up. This is uh, compatible with T2 mounts. So the, the screw pattern is the same. So you could mount this on uh, a different size mount if you wanted. It comes with the spacer installed. So this is at lower third height right now. If you remove the spacer, I believe it takes it down to absolute co-witness. So it does have a spacer installed. It comes with those other screws. If you remove the spacer, you can run it with this. So the optic is actually a 22 millimeter tube, which is two millimeters more than your standard like Aimpoint T2s and other micro uh, tube style red dots. Um, so that is nice. It does provide a slightly larger field of view. Um, in terms of length, I believe it is just a little bit longer. Um, I've got a standard T2 clone here. This is the Hollow Sun 403B. You can kind of take a look here at the optic size difference. So you can see that the uh, Romeo 7 is just a bit longer. Lens caps are removable. I don't usually run the clear ones very often, so they are removable, which does um, free up a little bit of space, makes it a little bit more compact. Um, so just be aware, you can take those off. Um, the lens is pretty close to the front. It does have a little bit of tilt, so if you were, for example, to hit this on the front, you have a little bit of protection here. So the lens doesn't come straight up to the edge. Um, so it is recessed into the optic body. One last thing I'll say, um, this is just a tabletop, but with the lens covers removed, you can see that the battery compartment cap does extend past the front of the optic, as does the adjustment knob on the back. Um, so one thing I could see under hard use, if this were to be dropped, you don't have any kind of protection at all for these. They are just kind of hanging out there. So um, just something to be aware. I can't tell if this is a metal or plastic cap, but that could be a failure point if this were dropped or bumped really hard. This knob on the back is metal. So Sig Sauer says that this, uh, the optic body is aircraft grade aluminum. It's probably similar to their other optics. Um, it does seem really robust. It has pretty thick, pr a pretty thick body. You can kind of see there how thick the housing is. Um, so it does seem like it would be fairly robust. The mount is also fairly robust. So um, having the larger cross screw is good. It makes it uh, more likely that it will not fail. Well, final thoughts, guys. To be honest, I'm probably not going to keep this optic. I'm probably going to return it. Um, the halo effect is fairly significant uh, and kind of disappointing in an optic from SIG. Um, the other thing is, again, with my astigmatism, sometimes I just have to look through the optic and see how that's going to affect me. And it does starburst pretty badly for me, so it's not a very crisp dot. But the halo effect is just really distracting. It's, it's again, showing you one more time just how how noticeable that is. See, I've only got it on about half power and you can already see around the edges some of that halo effect. Uh, again, this is a sample size of one, so it's possible that I just got a lemon, but it's something to be aware of, guys. The optic looks great. It looks like it'd be reliable. The halo effect is a major negative for me, as is the starbursting. Hope this helped. Guys, I'm Nate with Responsible Arm Korean. Thanks for stopping by the channel.